what's the management of a baby with RSV bronchiolitis? Well, let's take a look in on two nurses caring for baby Timmy. He's got RSV bronchiolitis. video was great and really emphasized those three main focuses of the management of bronchiolitis. Oxygen administration, suctioning the upper airways, and hydration. But it's really important to remember that focused assessment. We have to know how the baby's doing so that we can know how effective those interventions are. So let's think about what is that focused assessment of a baby with bronchiolitis. The first area of the focused assessment is going to be on the respiratory system. One part will be respiratory rate and rhythm. Now a child with bronchiolitis will definitely have tachypnea. That's going to be expected. The other aspect will also be the rhythm, particularly in newborn infants and young babies, because apnea is a possibility and is a big risk for young babies with bronchiolitis. So watch that rhythm also. Of course, we'll be looking at that O2 saturation. We'd like to keep the O2 saturation above 90 when they're awake and above 88 when they're asleep. So we'll be monitoring that infant on a pulse oximeter. We'll be listening for breath sounds or lung sound. Abnormal sounds that you might expect include crackles. Also wheezing is that other sound. Wheezing is that sound typically on expiration. It's a high mu high pitched musical sound. It sounds sort of like this.
Again, it's that air squeezing out through those narrowed bronchioles. So breath sounds, we wanna listen for those breath sounds on a regular basis. Next is looking at the work of breathing, how hard it, how much effort it takes to breathe. And there's many things that fall under this category. It includes things like nasal flaring. Nasal flaring is one. Retractions, that pulling in of the soft spaces, things like between the ribs, intracostal retractions, suprasternal retractions, and substernal retractions. We might also have strider or a high-pitched sound when they pull the air in. And that's usually inspiratory, and we don't need a stethoscope for that. Sounds more like <laughs> when they try to pull the air in. Diaphoresis or sweating. All of these are signs of increased work of breathing. Two manifestations of increased work of breathing that are more commonly seen in young infants include head bobbing. Their head actually moves with each respiration or bobs with each respiration. And also grunting. Grunting is that sound heard at the end of expiration as the epiglottis closes over the glottic opening. Huh, huh, huh. These are all manifestations of increased work of breathing. With RSV, another assessment we can make is increased secretions. This is expected again in RSV, increased nasal and mucus secretions. And we want to assess not only the amount, but the color and the viscosity or the thickness of the secretions. Babies may also run a fever or be in pain because of otitis media or a middle ear infection associated with the RSV infection. Now, while a respiratory infection is certainly the first aspect of this focused assessment, it's not the only part of the focused assessment. We also wanna look at the fluid balance. Fluid balance is not far behind in terms of what is on what is first in my mind regarding a child with an RSV bronchiolitis. The infant is likely to be dehydrated. This is for several reasons. One, an infant is likely to have poor oral intake. A baby with that stuffy nose, with all that congestion, and with such tachypnea is likely to have poor oral intake. Add to that, increased fluid losses secondary to tachypnea and a fever, and you end up with a fluid volume deficit. Manifestations of this fluid volume deficit include tachycardia, dry mucous membranes, thick and sticky mucus, decreased urine output. Now, how much urine is a young baby supposed to create or supposed to make? The normal urine output for an infant is one ml per kilo per hour. So that needs to be monitored on a regular basis. So these are the, this is, these are the aspects of a focused assessment. We need the respiratory part and we need that fluid balance. And this focused assessment needs to be done on a regular reoccurring basis. So now let's go back and think about the interventions those interventions are primarily supportive. We talked about oxygen. Oxygen is usually administered by nasal cannula, but remember, be sure that it's humidified. We wanna keep that mucus as thin as possible so the cilia can help mo be, move up that mucus. And we wanna keep the saturations above 90%. If they're on a pulse oximeter, be sure your alarms are set appropriately so we can be warned if the pulse oximeter if the oxygen saturation falls below 90. Suctioning needs to be done to keep the upper airway clear. We're not aiming to keep the trachea or the bronchi clear, just the nasal passages and the oral airway. Hydration is important. Oral hydration is best, but if the child has a large amount of nasal or oral secretions, or is very tachypnic, then oral hydration is inappropriate because aspiration is likely. 
And so IV hydration is important. One important part about that IV hydration is that it should include dextrose because young infants are prone to hypoglycemia. So that IV fluid should include dextrose and we should be carefully monitoring the serum glucose level of young babies. You might have noticed in the video the nurses were using contact isolation. Hand washing is also important. The RSV organism can be identified and this will be helpful if infants or children are being cohorted together. Remember, the supportive interventions of oxygen, suctioning, and hydration. Additional interventions may also be used in some infants. These include nebulized albuterol for bronchodilation, nebulized hypertonic saline, ribavirin, or steroids. These additional interventions may be helpful in some children. RSV bronchiolitis is managed with supportive care and frequent focused assessments. Remember, good hand, hand washing and contact isolation is so important to prevent the spread of RSV bronchiolitis and RSV infection.